Hey, True Believer Zenglantine here with a discussion. I'd like to say it's a review, but I think this is going to be more of a discussion of the X-Men Holiday Special. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm going to be reviewing it as we go on. Talk about the cover. It's okay. It's boring. You know, it's just... Oh, you know what? Actually, no, I really do want to talk about that cover. About the fact that you've got them sitting around a table drinking what I would assume is either coffee or hot cocoa because, you know, it's Christmas time and why not? I prefer per uh, peppermint myself. Um, but it gives kind of a feeling that you're going to get a nice story, a, a heartwarming story coming. No matter what you're going to, to see all along the way at the end, there's going to be some affirmation of goodness and, you know, just basically a, a Christmas message, a feel-good uh, kind of thing. Unfortunately, what you get is a series of one-page, can't even call them stories. Uh, however, there is, like, uh, throughout the, the book, uh, a story about Jubilee taking her baby to the mall. And... um that at least gives you something. Overall, though, and this is something, I mean, this is something you can actually see. If you read this book and you had no idea who the X-Men were, but you did know who the Marvel creators were, you could go, oh, okay, well, yeah, that's written by Marvel. As a matter of fact, like, I, I guess I should say, you know, yes, just go with that, okay, because... Judging and, and seeing, judging this by what they say on, on uh, to the customers and how how they act and react to people, and now of course they're coming over to DC. So what what can I say about that? But they are the most cynical people ever, and they see the most horrible things in the world. And I'm not talking about oh look, there's a horrible thing. I'm talking about they can see something nice. They're the like the people who would watch Rudolph and say Santa's a slave driver, and it's, you know, it's a, a saying that if you've got a handicap, you're useless until they need you or something like that. They're the well-actually people who won't let you enjoy anything without uh, without crushing it, and that's what you get here. That's what you get in this book. Not a damn one of them. No, I think one is actually... Something that will make you feel good about Christmas. Otherwise, they it's the most cynical book I, you, you could possibly pick up. It's a, a cynical book written by a whole bunch of, well, actually people. That's what this is. And each of them, like I like this one. This one with, uh, with, with Magneto helping two Jewish kids. And the Jewish kids tell them exactly what Hanukkah is all about. That is is what should be throughout the book. Unfortunately, no. No, very rarely do you get something like that. This one right here is, well, you gotta punch a Nazi. Ha, 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 ha. It just, you know what? There's nothing. This could be in any book. It doesn't have to be a Christmas special. And like I said, each one is its own page. This is part of the Jubilee story. And that was entertaining. I liked it. It was pretty good. But damn, what a cynical piece of crap overall this book is. And it just, it, it kind of saddens me, man, because Marvel didn't used to be like this. This is crap. By the way, the big gift that this girl's so happy to get is a signed script of The Last Jedi, by the way. Um, but it's just, man, I remember... Like we, I got this big treasury Christmas book one time, and it was just filled with really good stories that took place during Christmas. And each one of them made me feel like I was reading a holiday story. Now, granted, I was younger, and it was a little bit easier to get that feeling, but oh, God, dang. It just, I mean, that last one with Gambit and Rogue was about catching a cat. This one, uh, this one ends up, I mean, it starts off, oh, thanks for the gift. And then he gives this little snide remark at the end. I don't know.
I guess I'm just bitching and moaning about the same thing over and over again. But seriously, I would I there are better holiday books out there. There are better Christmas stories out there. And I'm going to try to touch upon some of them as we go throughout uh, the month of December here cuz it's fun. And I know last year I did a, a couple of uh I did a couple of reviews of like an old golden age Superman and Batman and Superman's freaking hilarious. You should find it. But um, they they are fun to do. And there are some really good holiday stories. Something that will make you actually feel like Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever. But not this one. On the other hand, we have the Barbarella Holiday Special. <laughs> okay, um, geez. Let's discuss this one as well. First of all, the Barbarella comic book has been pretty decent. I haven't done a lot of reviews on it. I really should, but uh, here's the first one, and here's the funny thing. This is a crap holiday book. I mean, especially when you consider it's flat out a Christmas book, or at least they want it to be. Well, you know what? Just This is going to be a weird thing because I'm going to be flipping back and forth in my opinion on this, I could tell. And how to, to approach it and how to say, well, was, is it a good one? Is it a bad one? First of all, this is a Christmas book the way that Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Because it takes place on a planet that Santa Claus decided to inhabit. He wanted to spread Christmas cheer. But since he put the planet outside of the jurisdiction of any law... The only people that came to the planet were criminals. So Santa Claus knew his audience and knew how to make his money. And yes, he's doing it for the money in this one. And decided to cater to these people. One of the things is there is no violence. He has a big robot army. That's his elves. And he can enforce the law on that planet. So he does. And uh, one, one night there is a murder. And he, excuse me, let me turn off the air conditioner or the heater here. Uh, so one night is there's a murder and he decides that he's going to have Barbarella solve it. And they even uh, use a, a robot with some sort of data card to resurrect a, a an old, um, an old superhero to help her solve the mystery. And that's the story. The only Christmas thing is the setting, so it's just like Die Hard in the fact that, yeah, it's not really a Christmas movie or book. It's not about that. Um, the reason why I would say this is better than the X-Men one, even though, you know, that one wasn't very... Here's the thing. That one was about Christmas, but it was in a, such a way that just doesn't give you that feeling and it just dropped the ball completely. This one, on the other hand, just uses Christmas as the setting, so you can forgive it not being about that big Christmas spirit. Uh, this is a mystery, and shock, surprise, it's done very well. Um, granted, they do introduce a character or two where you're like, okay, this is the red herring, this is the, you know, that kind of thing, like... Uh, there's one guy who might as well be twirling a mustache and going, <laughs> where, you know, all fingers are pointed towards him. So obviously, since it's a mystery, it's not going to be that guy. Um, it, it's just too obvious, you know. Uh, and that makes you go, well, okay, then I guess it's this character. So, yeah, if you let yourself go to the story, you're going to have a little bit more fun. But if you add a, a, a drop of brain to it, it's... Uh, as far as the mystery part is concerned, you're you're going to figure it out pretty quickly. That being said, if you do let yourself go to the story, if you do just let the story take you, you're going to have a lot of fun. The dialogue, everything is just set up to create a very good mystery. And they go about it the way they should. They the It's not solved by like a, a lucky chance thing, which a lot of comic book mysteries are. They actually talk to everybody. They deduce things. And finally they come to, uh, they, they come to the answers. It's not like they say, well, wait a second. We found that knife over here on Joe. And Joe decides, I'm going to kill you coppers. I did it. And this is why, uh, you know, it's not a, nothing like that. They actually 
figure stuff out as they go. And you can try. I uh, I figured it out. But the thing is, the dialogue just is there and it lets you figure it out as well. I was very impressed with this book. I liked this book. I would recommend Barbarella way before I would recommend the X-Men. And that is not even a hard decision. The art I thought was crisp and it reminded me of uh, stuff like the Film Force and the Elementals from the 1980s. It really does. Look at that. Look at the art there. It's not incredible, but it's good. And mostly the book, it's just a lot of fun. Well, that's my opinion. What is yours? Have you read the Barbarella Holiday Special? Have you read the X-Men Special? By all means, let her rip. What did I get right? What did I get wrong? What do you think? I know I kind of took took a little bit of time to get to the point on the X-Men thing. Sorry about that one, but let me know in the comments below what you think. Also, if you haven't done it yet, click like, share, get word out about the channel. That's always good. Hit subscription if you haven't done that. Notifications, of course, don't want to miss anything. Cool things happen around these parts. And don't forget, if you don't mind helping the channel out, go on over to Patreon. Drop a dollar in the till. Helps keep the lights on and helps keep making videos for you. Like, thank everybody who's already done that. And to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching.